Howdy! I need a price tag hanging off my hat like Minnie Pearl. Some of you probably won't even know who Minnie Pearl is. That'll date me. Anyway, welcome back. Today we are pruning. Now, normally when I prune, I wait until I'm spraying Actinovate, which is the product I use to control fungus. But we've had so much rain that has to be sprayed in the evening because I add the insecticidal soap in it that I'm out here today to tidy things up before they get too far out of hand. So with that in mind, there are two things that I make sure always. One, the leaves are dry. You never ever want to prune when they are wet or you are very likely to spread disease from plant to plant to plant. And secondly, you need to have something to sterilize your hands and or your pruners. I keep this little spray bottle. It has half water, half um, isopropyl alcohol in it. You could also mix up bleach water, one part bleach to three parts water. And I just keep my hands sprayed or my pruners sprayed between cuts. Now what do I prune? Well, previously I showed you in one of my seed starting videos how I pruned some of my pepper seedlings. And I'll show you what they look like now. This is the shishito pepper that I trimmed. You can see all the extensive branching that has come out from this plant. Now I don't continue to prune the peppers. Once I prune them as seedlings before they get transplanted out here, that's it. I let them go and let them grow. The next thing I prune are cucumbers. And here's a little video I did the other day of pruning cucumbers and the whys and the hows. The purpose of pruning cucumbers when you're growing them in a container up a trellis is to encourage your upward growth and to help optimize your yield. So, when you're looking at the cucumber, this little area right in here is called a node. Off of the node, you're going to have a fruit, which is flower. There's another one going to come. A tendril, a leaf, and a growth point. If you let the growth point grow, it will come out and also expand and grow another fruit, another tendril, and another leaf. What you want to do to keep it growing upright and not going crazy, and as I said, to uh, also optimize your yield, is you want to remove the growth point. Obviously, you leave the fruit, you leave the tendril so that it can grab the trellis, you leave the leaf for photosynthesis, and you simply remove the growth point by pinching, pinching it off. Now right next to it is another example of where I did not get the, the growth point before it's already grown out. But let me show you on this nod, node, you've got the fruit, the leaf, the tendril, and this right here is the growth point. And if you can see, it's already starting to repeat the process of growing another fruit another tendril but I don't want it to do that and even though it's a little long I'm just going to take fingernails and pinch it off. Now let's turn our attention to eggplant because I've got one behind me here that needs pruning. I've already done all the rest. Why do I prune eggplant? Well guess what? They're a lot like the tomato. If you study your eggplant plant structure you will see that there are suckers in every crotch of the plant. You got the main stem, you have a leaf coming off, and in the crotch or the axle, there will be a sucker. Just like the tomato, if you let that sucker grow, it's going to compete with the main stem. It will produce another more leaves and fruit, 
but it will be very unmanageable and hard to stake. And since I do everything in containers, I want it simple and easy, and I want big fruit. I don't want a whole ton of little bitty fruit. So let me show you the eggplant that still needs pruning, and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, hopefully it's not too hard for you to see. I've got some basil growing here in the front. I'm gonna start at the bottom. There is a lot of little sucker growth here. I'm gonna take this lower leaf off. Eggplants are notorious for getting flea beetles and I've got an infestation of them now. Waiting to spray tonight, hopefully, for that. Okay, this is pretty tall, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these lower leaves. Oh, I wanna show you right here. You see this leaf? Here's the main stem. See right here in the middle? That is the sucker. Take that off. Another leaf, main stem. Here's the sucker. Just snap that off. Same thing over here. Now, here's another one. Now, if you look at this spot right here, here's my first flower. This is a pretty good size sucker right here. Hello, bee. I'm going to carefully hold the stem and snap it off. And that's all you do. I am gonna remove this leaf now that I've shown you pruning out the sucker on it. As the plant gets taller, I'll continue to remove the lower leaves where the flea beetles really like to go. Of course, they're all the way up here too. I see the tiny holes. But that's how you do it. Find the crotch and remove the sucker. Let's talk about tomatoes. Well, the other day when I was pruning my tomatoes and filming, I neglected to turn the mic on. Had it plugged in, but didn't turn it on, so there was no sound. So I will explain in some parts of the video you're about to watch what I'm doing and why. But let's talk first a little bit about tomatoes. A tomato is a solar powered sugar factory. The first month of a tomato's life all of its sugar is directed at growing new leaves. And in fact, it will double in size about every two weeks. Eventually, the plant makes more sugar than the growing tip can handle, and so it signals the tomato plant to start growing out branches and a flower. That's usually when it's about 12 to 18 or so inches tall. And that's still pretty small for a tomato plant. It's a good size for a transplant, but it's small for a tomato to bear fruit. So that's one of the main reasons that I pinch the flower blossoms off when they're that small. Once I get them transplanted out here, they're usually two, two and a half feet tall at that point. So any flowers that are on them at that point in time, I leave. So the goal here is to maximize the efficiency of photosynthesis and to minimize the risk for disease. The best way to ensure that is going to be with pruning. You want to make sure that your leaves are exposed to the sun and not shaded because a shaded leaf will take the sugar from the plant trying to survive. And once that leaf cannot absorb the sugar anymore, it will yellow and fall off the vine. So what are the goals of pruning? Well, I consider them to be about four or five. First, air circulation. That's gonna keep a healthier plant. Secondly, if it's pruned properly, your leaves are going to dry off a lot faster, thus minimalizing the risk of bacterial and fungi pathogens to develop. Third, if you keep it pruned up, you're less likely to have soil splash up onto the leaves again promoting fungal development. Fourth, it allows more plants to be grown in a limited area like I have here because I keep them well pruned. And fifth, it's a lot easier to support your tomato plants if they're properly pruned. Now, just like with the cucumber plant where I showed you uh, the node area that had the leaf, the fruit, um, the tendril, 
to attach to and the, the growth point. The growth point being pretty much the same thing as a sucker. Tomato has those things too, except for the tendril part. Even though it is a vine, it will not support itself. It has to be staked and tied to the stake in some, in some way. In this part of the video, you are seeing me take away some pretty large leaves. Actually, this first video that you're looking at is a sucker that I allowed to grow. The leaf that was below the sucker actually was showing signs of fungus early on and so it was removed. So what I'm removing here is an actual sucker. I can't let that continue to grow because if it does it will be out of bounds in the in the aisle very hard to support and it will become huge. It will become just like a main stem with more branches, more leaves, flowers, and fruit. Now you might say, but you're cutting off your fruit. Well, yes, but my goal is less fruit, but bigger fruit versus more fruit and smaller fruit. And in this example here, I'm showing you how the sucker that the side shoot, which again, it was a, this is a sucker because I had pruned off the lower leaves that were showing signs of fungus. It is actually bigger around than your main stem. And that's not a good thing because remember the main stem, you know, the part that's buried in the potting mix, it has to support the tomato plant for the entire four, five, six month season, however long your season is. There are really two possible ways to prune suckers. In this video, in this section of the video, I'm showing you the standard way where you just simply pinch it out. If it's a little bigger, like this one, you take a, you take your thumb and index finger and give it a quick snap. The other type of pruning is called Missouri pruning. And I tend to do these on the suckers above the first sets of fruit. Below the first set of fruit, I remove them completely. Above the first set of fruit, a little up higher on the plant, I tend to do the Missouri pruning. And this is how this is done. So here, instead of taking out the entire sucker, I am just pinching out the growing tip of the sucker. Now, will that stop it from growing? No. You got to come back and keep checking it. And by the way, you should really be checking at least once a week on tomatoes because they will get huge overnight, it seems. So I hope this video helped explain a little bit about pruning and why to do it and how to do it. The next video that I will be doing will be on spray for the bugs and the fungal yucky stuff. So until I see you out here spraying, remember, bye folks. And I hope you have a good day.